Now, I wonder how many of you remember this, the lovely Louise. Louise Brown from Bristol, of course, the world's first test tube baby. Her birth gave hope to millions of infertile couples across the world. And over 40 years on, and an incredible 8 million IVF babies since, the West is still leading the way in fertility research. The latest project, led by the University of Bristol, bless you, is hoping to discover which couples are more likely to conceive artificially. Here's our health correspondent, Matthew Hill. Pippa and Odie owe their tiny lives to IVF, all a result of ICSI treatment, where their father's sperm was injected into their mother's egg in these labs at the biggest reproductive health centre in the region. As part of the research project, they're volunteering to have health readings, analysis of their medical history and environmental factors to shed light on things that may affect the chances of success with IVF. Going through IVF is horrendous. You can do everything right, everything the doctor says, and still at the end of the day, you can have a negative outcome. You know, yeah, we lost two, but actually at the end of losing those two, that data has still hopefully gone to do some good for people down the road. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's good for other people to know or learn from our experiences. Around a third of fertility treatment here is on the NHS, but the rest is private, costing thousands of pounds. That's why it's so important to give customers better information about how likely they are to have a baby. At the moment, they rely on fairly crude measures, such as weight and age. We take some measures before they start their treatment, so blood samples and height and weight and blood pressure. And the idea around this is to look at um, whether pregnancy is the same for IVF pregnancies um, compared to non-IVF pregnancies, um, and then also to look at, um, to follow these people up for several years um, to look at health outcomes in, in both the parents um, and the children conceived by IVF. Studies have shown that between 1951 and 74, the sperm count has declined by more than half, and ever since, it's continued to go down. Now, this study may shed light on why that's happening. One theory is about chemicals from plastics in water, known as phthalates, which may be altering our balance of hormones. The male partner, unfortunately, is, is perhaps often ignored in, in, uh, in uh, research studies, um, and, and so we will be looking at, at um, his sperm parameters, his lifestyle, medical history, um, to, to see whether, to what extent that's impacting as well. This is a very long-term project, but it may well give the information to infertile couples that they desperately need. Matthew Hill, BBC Points West.